Good afternoon. My name is Rich Nass, and I am the Executive Vice President for Open Systems Media, and I am here for our next installment of Five Minutes With, and today we have a special guest, T.J. Rogers, the founder and CEO of Cypress Semiconductor. How are you, T.J.? I'm great, Rich. Thank you. Good. Good. Great. And we're very pleased to have you here. So, uh, as you know, we only get five minutes for these interviews, so we want to jump right into the questions. So, let me start with this. You've accomplished a ton of things in your career. You, you've received many uh, uh, awards and things. What are some of the accomplishments that you're most proud of in your career? Well, if I, if I look back at the big ones, uh, going back to college, um, uh, I was salutatorian number two at Dartmouth. I, I won the award as uh, best chemistry and physics student. I've, I've always been proud of that. Um, <clears throat> I got out of uh, Dartmouth and I went to Stanford and uh, I invented the technology there. It's a technology that put transistors inside of V grooves that were etched with, with isotropic uh, etching. Um, and I sold that to AMI, uh, where I worked. I, I'm proud of those patents. Uh, interestingly enough, the, the technology was a colossal failure, and AMI had lost all their R&D for two years on it. Um, then I went to AMD, and I learned about business. That was a good part of my career at, at a very well-run company, and I still maintain a relationship with Jerry Sanders. Um, started Cypress. It was only my third job. Um, we started in 82, so that was... Uh, 32 years ago, almost 33, and uh, took Cypress public in three years and one month after founding. So the founders and I were, were very proud of that. Um, Cypress uh, hit the billion-dollar mark in 2000. Of course, a lot of companies did. Uh, we didn't quite hold it, but, but we got to that, that uh, zip code, and, and I'm proud of that. In uh, 2008... Uh, we hit the $2 billion mark. Uh, that, uh, this is when we had acquired a small solar company called SunPower, and we <clears throat> nurtured it up to be a company that actually got bigger than Cypress. Uh, that company we spun out in 2008, and that was worth $2.6 billion. Our shareholders got that spin out, so I'm, I'm very proud of that. And SunPower today, by the way, is the um, second largest solar company in the world by revenue. Um, I did a project on my own in 2009 where I wanted to use our PSOC chips, so I, I made a fermenter. Uh, we talk about the Internet of Things. I made a fermenter uh, with a team here at Cypress that designed it and then the team made it with me that is an Internet of Things appliance, and uh, I donated uh, uh, 152 of them to UC Davis, so they have the state-of-the-art uh, winemaking facility in the world. I I have a winery, and I've been interested in winemaking for, for a couple decades. Um, longevity at Cypress, I've been here a little over 32 years. December 1st will be my 33rd year, so I, I think as CEO, I don't, I don't know of another CEO that's been around that long, so survival is good. I'm 66 years old. And uh, finally, I've got a new challenge. Uh, we are about three weeks away from merging with Spansion, so that will create a $2 billion company. And the challenge is to make it a growing, very profitable company, and I'm, I'm looking very much forward to that. spend all my time working on that right now. That's a pretty long list of accomplishments, and uh, I would never have guessed your age. I know we've, we've met a bunch of times, and I did, was not aware of, of, of your age. So you look great for your age, so I'll just say that. Uh, um, now, you start off by talking about your college career, and uh, you know, one of the things we talk a lot about here is whether colleges are really getting today's engineers ready for a career in engineering. What's your thoughts on that? Are, there, are the U.S. colleges really doing their jobs? Um, I think so. I actually went back to Dartmouth, my alma mater, and I was a trustee for eight years. Um, always impressed with the quality of the college students. Uh, I can tell you for a fact, because I've been exposed to statistics, that uh, college students today don't study as many hours as, as students did like 20 years ago. I'm not sure that matters a lot. They, they know a lot more because they started a lot, uh, a lot farther along. <clears throat> I can tell you the projects I see college students doing in engineering today are, are much more complicated than the projects we did when I was in college. So. And I, and I also am personally involved in college recruiting. I, I literally um, meet with uh, groups of students here that we recruit every group. So I've met every college grad uh, that Cypress hires. And we, 
we're real picky and we go for the best and we recruit them as if they were, you know, getting the top scientists from our arch rival. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. You, you could argue that, that they don't write as well as they should. Some of their basic skills aren't as good as they ought to be. I, I've heard all of that. But all in all, um, I'll take a team from uh, 2015 and I'll beat a team from, from uh, 2000. That's a, that's a very interesting one. I think I'm going to take that and run with it and ask other people that same question. Okay, so we, have, we went through some of your accomplishments. So if you can go back and change something in your career, is there anything you'd like to change? And if, if so, what would it be? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. Of course, if I could take what I know now, I'm a learning person. Uh, I, I learn more. Today, at age 66, I learn more per week than I learned when I was working on my Ph.D. at Stanford. Absolutely a fact. Uh, so if I could take all the knowledge I've gained over the years, said another way, if I could look at all the screw-ups I made that got corrected and done right after the fact, and then start the right way to begin with, uh, uh, the company be a lot better on. I try to give back and I, uh, to other companies by being on boards of some startups in Silicon Valley to try to give them the benefit of my experience. But in specifically, um, when Cypress was started in 82, Americans didn't get quality. I never had a quality course in college. I didn't know quality math. And we were in the process just when we started up of getting beat up pretty badly by the Japanese. Now, on, on the end, uh, creativity trumped quality. But uh, it, was, it was a pretty ugly decade, uh, the first decade of Cyprus, even the first 15 years. So I would, I would have had a, a VP of quality as a founder. We didn't. We, we kind of watched over quality ourselves. And the quality wouldn't have been just product quality. It would have been the quality of everything, the quality of the numbers we used, the quality of, of the presentations we made, the quality of the, of the memos we wrote. I would have uh, been at a zero PPM kind of quality mentality in the beginning, and that, that would have made a huge difference. Um, I'm a make guy. I'm an engineer, so I like to design and, and make stuff. And I would have uh, captured uh, one or two more visionary people, you know, the, the quote, flaky, unquote, guys that, are, that have crazy ideas that, that oftentimes are the ideas that make a lot of money. Yep. And I would have uh, figured a way to, to uh, keep uh, a couple more uh, creative guys in the company um, other than that, it, you know, I'm, I've lived a charmed life. I live in the best place in the world. I've, I've had a career that's outstanding. Um, I'm pretty happy. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, we're just about out of time, but I'd be remiss if I just didn't ask you this one last question. Um, you have a reputation as being somebody who's not afraid to speak his mind, not afraid to ruffle people's feathers. Um, you know, you know, sometimes you hurt people's feelings and maybe that's going too far, but is that characterization accurate? I mean, are you a guy, you know, who's, who, who isn't afraid to tell it like it is? And, you know, do you sometimes uh, even cross the line? Uh, I certainly tell it like it is. I, I think uh, that is one secret to longevity, that I've never gamed a board of directors or uh, told employees something that I knew wasn't true and then had to deal with the, out, the, the, the problems of, of that later. Um, I, I sometimes, uh, I sometimes get loud and sometimes people that aren't used to that get freaked out. I've calmed down some over the years, so I'm, I'm better now, but all in all, uh, I think the truth is a way to fly. If it, it certainly gives other people confidence in you. And I think the statistic that I like best there is that, uh, the people have come to Cyprus and left and. And then later on, I, I actually meet with everybody that leaves Cyprus, and I talk to them and try to con the, the best ones, and I try to convince them to come back or not to leave. And they come back, and I reintroduce them to the company and tell a story about how they left in a company meeting and and, and uh, what the situation was. And today, uh, we have 3,600 employees, over 3,600, 900, a quarter of our employees uh, are returnees to Cyprus. So sometimes you can be in a meeting and, and get your tail feathers cinched and say, I've had enough of this stuff and leave. But in, long, in the long haul, I think people want to be in an environment where truth and hard work matter and, and politics is not, is not allowed. And 
that's the one thing I think that's sort of a trump of being, uh, being uh, the trump card of being honest, even if sometimes honesty and bluntness um, cause awkward situations. I agree with you 100%, and I subscribe to that same theory, and I've often been told it's my New Jersey attitude, and that's fine because it works for me. Yeah, New okay. Yorkers. Every, everybody tells me that, you know, they say, oh, I went to New York, and those people were awful rude. And I go to New York, and I find an amazing amount of candor. Uh, I find people that are very friendly. You can't open up a map on a street in New York without somebody walking up saying, can I help you? So, uh, so to me, candor and straightforwardness are not, are not rudeness. They're, they're a sign of respect. You took the words right out of my mouth. Well, thank you, TJ. I really appreciate your honesty and candor in, in our five minutes, which ran a little bit over, but, but that's fine. That was TJ Rogers, the founder and, C and CEO of Cypress Semiconductor. Thank you, TJ. Thank you.